Hello and welcome to another follow point of sale tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up classes and items underneath those classes onto your client system. And that's actually quite important because we need to first add classes and items before we can start writing tickets. And these classes and items will be added onto your follow cloud account for easy share across all your devices. That way you don't have to add them or the classes and items onto each individual computer. Uh, you just do it on one computer and it gets shared across your entire network. Uh, let's first add the classes before we add the items. And that's actually quite important. We go to Utilities up above, and then we click on down on Class Manager, which will pop up a screen. And then right here, we have a list of all the classes. And then it's also divided into two parts. So the first part is the list of classes, and down below we have uh, the individual fields attached to the classes uh, which we can then modify. So we can edit classes right here as well as add any classes that we want as well as remove any existing classes uh, that are defaulted on your system or in case you make any mistakes. And I'll show you all those things in a little bit. But first we need to select the class. So let's go ahead and click on dry cleaning. And then down below, we can make any sort of modifications or edit this class. So first, we have the class code. This is a unique class code that hasn't been used before that is an individual or a single character code. So for instance, it can be a single number or a single letter. Uh, and this is actually quite important because they need to be unique. Um, and I'll go, the, I'll, I'll go over those in a little bit, and you'll see why. And then down below is the description, which is for in this case is called dry cleaning. And remember that it's uppercase, so make sure you it's continuous, so it's capital all, all caps. And then down below we have all these check boxes, and we have all these fields. We can go ahead and apply a tax onto this ta on, onto this class, as well as uh, apply uh, an environmental fee, both of which which can be uh, set on store manager. But we also have the days of pickup, which is a box here, so we can add a number. Uh, this is to set the number of days to pickup that is different from the default number of days on your system. Uh, that is if you have a class that might take an additional X amount of days because of the type of material. So for instance, if it's like made of leather or some kind of high quality garment or, 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 or material or fabric that needs an additional number of days. So we can this is this is where we can add that 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 number. And the respective to that, we have the force prepayment. So if you want to force a prepayment prepayment for in an individual class, we can go ahead and add that. In order to add classes that require a pop-up uh, a scan code, we can click on the pop-up scan code checkbox so that when you're writing a ticket, an automatic pop-up window sh will show up requiring requiring the user to scan an item. And and then down here, these are kind of self-explanatory. This is don't pick print a ticket, or don't print tags. Uh, so this is pertains to the the class that you're currently modifying. And every time you make a modification, so if you if you start like writing, uh, you must always end it with click clicking on the save button up on top, and then clicking on OK. So let's go ahead and start adding classes. To do that, let's click on the Add button up above, and then we're introduced with a, a blank set of fields. So we have the class code. This must be a unique class code. Let me stress that. It has to be unique. I must stress that there are defaulted uh, class codes here on the right. So here's our little cheat sheet. So there's D for dry cleaning, L for laundry, R for leather, P for press only, and H for household. You must use these for those individual classes or else the system won't really work for those defaulted ones. So let's go ahead and add W for wholesale. So let's go ahead and add a description of wholesale. Uh, let's apply if you if you want to add taxable or environmental fees, we can go ahead and do that right here. And then once we're done, we just click on save and click OK. And then to delete any existing classes, we click on, we select the, the class that we need. So we'll just click on wholesale, the one that we just created, and click on remove, and then click OK. And that's pretty much it. So let's move on to items. Uh, the important thing to note that it's kind of obvious is that the items should be added after 
you add your classes. So once you're done adding your classes, you can click on close and then let's go to utilities and then down on the one below that says class manager is the one that says item manager. Let's go and go ahead and click on that. And then we can go ahead and select the class here uh, to go ahead and start editing. So I'll click on dry cleaning. And this is the list of all the items that are underneath the dry cleaning class. Um, when editing or adding items, you can see that they have the respective codes, so such as numbers or letters, um, right here in the item code column. Same as the classes, you need unique codes that pertain to each class, that is, to each category. With items, you need unique codes for each item per category per class, not for all classes. This means that you can use an existing code used in dry cleaning as you would for dry cleaning. So that is to say, unique codes for each individual class. A uh, couple of disclaimers though, zero for the item code zero is um, reserved only for describing price, a feature that I described in the writing tickets uh, video. So before we can add items, look into the search screen, which this is by the way, the search screen, uh, for an available number or letter. The list that appears here is the same order uh, for when you start writing tickets. Um, uh, so these are the basic requirements for adding basic items. Let's go ahead and click on add and then we'll go ahead and add an item code. So I saw that one was available. And then for item description, we'll just add in shirt. Then we'll need the number of pieces, which is one, and the price, which I'll put to $3. And then that's basically it. We'll just go ahead and click on save, uh, then close, and that's basically it. So we can also add a browse for images. So we want to add images. We click on this button and then we can apply an image onto this item. Then once we're done, we can click on click on save, which I think I did already. Um, and that's it. Those, those are the basic requirements. Uh, once you do that, you can go ahead and start adding the items and prices right now. That's if, especially if you have a list of items that are basic such as this. So the requirements again are one, item, two, item description, three, pieces, and then uh, four, which is the prices. And then um, all the rest are kind of optional. So that said, if you have sub items or different types of items that you want to force your counter person to choose from, uh, then we could go ahead and add those force up charges. Those are what we call the force up charges and that we can add them right here below using the add and then we would save them. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's go ahead and save and then go back to the search button and let me first show you how to actually delete an item here. So same as like for class manager, you would highlight the, the item here and then we just press delete and then that will delete the record. So let's go ahead and add that dress uh, again since we just deleted. Um, especially now that we can add four sub charges onto the, that. So let's click on add. Uh, let's use a unique item code. So D for address. And then for the number of pieces, just go ahead and leave that at zero um, as well as price, leave it at zero since we don't want to do math and um, the four sub charges down here below the price and the piece number for the four sub charge will actually be added to the total a number of pieces and price um, um, uh, above. So don't do the math, just leave the, these at zero. So in fact, let me just go ahead and add those at zero uh, and let the force of, of charge do the math. So we would go ahead and click on save. Um, let's actually delete these items here and then let's just start adding them. So for the code, I'll just do one uh, and then I'll just add it as one piece. Uh, for the number of the price, I'll just uh, put it at $4. And then we'll click on save down here below. And we can add um, other items as well. And remember that you all also need a, a different uh, unique code as well. So two for two piece. Oh no. And then I'll charge that $5. And then we click on save. We can also add um, images onto these four sub charges. So we can go ahead and click on browse for image and we can select from the, uh, from the, from the multiple Im images um, provided to you. And then once we're done, we can just click on save. And that's it. Um, just as a fair a reminder, forced upcharges forces the user 
to select one upcharge. This is not used for op optional upcharge, such as, such as silk or color, in which you can select many options for the item above. This is actually forced upcharge, meaning you can only select one, um, but it is forced, meaning the counter person has to select one whether he likes it or not. And that's it. So let's go back to the search screen. So let's go ahead and save here. And let's go back to the search screen and uh, let's move on to laundry. So we would click here on select class here to edit. So let's go down to laundry. And just as, as we did on dry cleaning, we can go ahead and start adding our, our um, items onto this class, so for laundry. Um, but first, I actually want to go over one last thing with you that pertains with wash and fold. So there's two types of laundry. There's regular or common items to wash, and then we have wash and fold. So when we want to add a wash and fold item, uh, we start out just like uh, regular items. We click on the add button up on top. Actually, let me see. Okay, okay. So we add um, a new code. So W for wash and fold and fold. Uh, then we would have the number of pieces, so I'll just leave that at one. Um, for the price, this would be the price per pound. This is only pertains to wash and fold, by the way. So this would be the price per pound. I might charge $2 per pound. And then we would go ahead and click on the pop-up quantity. So that way, when we're writing the ticket, a pop-up window will come up asking for the number of pounds that you have just received. Um, in terms of the quantity label, um, though, um, we would just add pound so that it shows respectively onto our ticket um, uh, ticket receipt. And then for the last final part, it would be the minimum amount. So the, the minimum amount of, uh, of, of pounds you um, perhaps your store might allow, uh, might require at least. So uh, you might require a minimum of 10 pounds per, uh, per wash and fold order. Um, and and that's basically it. So when it comes to the and when it comes to the wash and fold, um, uh, and so the item code and the item description, the number of pieces, the price, the pop-up quantity, quantity label, and the minimum amount are just some of the basic uh, fields that are required. For the rest of them, they're not really important right now. Um, I don't want you to worry about the rest of those fields because they pertain to. Uh, inventory to control, which I will definitely cover in a later video, but I will go over them some of them right now. So the pop-up auto description is a pop-up asking for a description. Um, alteration type though is a pop-up that asks um, if the item here should be attached to the item above. So this field actually pertains um, to when you're actually adding items under the alteration class. So um, we would have to, when we're saving here, we would have to go back to the search screen and go to alteration um, a class. And so when we're adding items onto this onto this class, we can go ahead and start adding that uh, alteration class there. Um, so for instance, if you click yes on that on that checkbox that I showed you, uh, uh, a pop-up window comes, then it won't add the piece, then it won't add the piece count onto the total number of piece counts, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, also, there. Uh, before I forget, actually, there is for convenience. We have a price list for you, if you want to preview and then print the list of all your items and prices. Um, and lastly, make sure you always click on save uh, when you're done, and 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 then that's it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.